Hi, everyone. If you're joining, you're here for the uh, Head Start and Child Tax Credit uh, information training session partnership uh, introduction. So um, we'll give it a few minutes here just to let everyone join. I just can I get a thumbs up um, if folks are able to see the screen should say Head Start and Child Tax Credit. All right, I see a few thumbs. So it looks like we're looks like we're good. We'll give it a few minutes while uh, folks are joining and uh, we'll get started here shortly. All right, welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to the uh, Head Start and Child Tax Credit uh, Enrollment and Training and Partnership Information Session uh, here with the NHSA. I wanna welcome everyone. We'll uh, get into uh, what we're gonna be doing today. We should be finished uh, short of the hour, but we'll go ahead and get started. So uh, first welcome is always the Head Start. Uh, thank you to the programs that have been able to join us for um, this very important uh, uh, piece of work for not only for our country, but in particular for our community. Um, just a few housekeeping things. You do have the option to mute and unmute. We're going to be breaking this up by just a very quick uh, introduction to what we're talking about today. Uh, then we'll get into 30 minutes or so of content around the child tax credit enrollment training. And then at the very end, we have uh, 15 to 20 minutes on question and answer. Um, so folks will be able to ask their questions via chat or mute, unmute their lines. I'm just going to ask you all to, to please be mindful to mute, unmute yourself. Uh, if you're not chat, if you're not talking, if not, you know, we will mute you and uh, so we don't get distracted. Um, but uh, that's just some housekeeping things for us. So let me get right to it. Uh, we want to introduce the opportunity. Um, we have some learning opportunity on child tax credit and how our programs are working on the ground uh, to enroll the families. And um, we also have a, a capacity opportunity, which our friends at the AmeriCorps will be sharing with us in just a minute. Um, I like you to get an understanding of who is on the call today. Um, not all of uh, the programs in Head Start have been invited. We are going to be doing that at some point here in the near future. The programs that are on the call right now are programs that have been uh, geographically targeted by, um, by uh, most need right now for the child tax credit enrollment. And these are the programs that we have heard back that have essentially raised their hands to say, we are already doing this work. We're interested in doing this work. We'd like to learn more. So some information may be repetitive. You may have already heard it, um, but just please bear with us as we work on this opportunity um, to, to get us all uh, in, enrolling families into child tax credit. Um, so I'll pivot here in just a second over to uh, AmeriCorps. But you, if you can do me a favor and I'll, uh, in just a second here, um, I'm gonna ask you to enter your name your title, your program name, and general service area in the country uh, into the chat. Um, so I broke down where we're at for uh, the, the agenda today. You'll get to hear from uh, folks uh, that are working uh, in child tax credit. Um, and you also get to hear in the question and answer, we have 
um, a PFCE manager at Hope's Cap from Somerset, New Jersey. Her name is Lori Rice. Rice. I'm sorry, I think I got that wrong. Um, and she has been doing the work uh, in her community in Somerset, New Jersey. So we wanted to have someone who's able to talk about what Head Start specifically has been doing uh, uh, in, in the child tax credit. So uh, as I mentioned, um, if you can type in your name, title, program name and general service area of the country that you're in. Uh, for example, if you're metropolitan Chicago, Western Massachusetts, greater Boston area, um, if you can type that in, um, that is important for us because we will be doing follow up to each of you individually to match up for the opportunity of, uh, of capacity. So I think that's a, that's a good pivot to send over to uh, Malcolm Coles, who is the acting CEO of AmeriCorps, Malcolm. Well, thank you so much for the introduction and thanks for the invitation. Uh, it's just a, a wonderful opportunity to be here today. And uh, right off the bat, I want to just state our appreciation, AmeriCorps, which is the National Service uh, uh, Agency, uh, really values this partnership that's evolving with the National Head Start Association to really put some impetus behind an, an effort to push to enroll uh, individuals who are currently uh, not participating in the child uh, tax credit uh, opportunity. Just before I go any further, I wanted to introduce a couple of my colleagues who are pivotal players in this effort on our team. Uh, Meg Ann Sarah, uh, who is the director of AmeriCorps VISTA, uh, and uh, Atalia Sergey, who is the director of AmeriCorps Seniors. And I'll explain a little bit about their roles and their participation in a minute. Uh, I, I want to say that Beyond the shadow of a doubt, the single biggest contribution that AmeriCorps will make in this effort is something we've already done, which is brokered an introduction uh, to the White House, uh, to the National Head Start Association. When you think about what you need in terms of architecture and reach and capacity to really make this best effort, uh, there's no one better positioned than the folks on this call. I mean, National Head Start Association uh, under Yasmina's leadership, and I've had the pr privilege of working with her for over a quarter of a century, it is so well positioned. Uh, you know, 1,600 centers, 225,000 employees, uh, and the engagement with over a million children. Uh, there's no better vehicle at our disposal for getting uh, the megaphone in your hands. So thank you for what you're about to do. The original idea was uh, hatched by uh, Gene Sperling, who was managing the American Rescue Plan activities at the White House uh, and his team uh, about, again, trying to amplify availability on a child tax credit participation. He was looking to use uh, the resource network of AmeriCorps and our programs. Of course, we were all in uh, and we are all in. Uh, I think the design is one that's intelligently crafted Joel was mentioning, we're limiting it to about 16 or so uh, sort of key geographies uh, with high representation or lack of representation in terms of IRS non-filers. We know that this is a challenging effort because uh, we're trying to reach folks who have already turned down two opportunities for stimulus checks. And so it's, it's going to be something where the trust that I think the parents have in you as uh, their, their valued resources and and support network in the community are going to be uh, the, the sort of major uh, force vector that's going to allow us to get further traction going forward. As I mentioned, the Head Start Centers on this call and your staff, thanks for embracing this, are really the, the sort of localized points of contact and a sort of taking the lead on it. AmeriCorps' value proposition is uh, we recognize that we have a network of volunteers and members, senior volunteers that are locally based, uh, AmeriCorps VISTA volunteers that are locally based. Uh, plus we have a residential program that allows us to deploy full-time members to special projects on an as needed basis. Uh, we're committed to supporting uh, the Head Start White House effort fully. Uh, we have folks that we believe can play roles uh, in support of uh, the promoting awareness and also the role of navigation to get individuals enrolled. It's not going to look identical across the entire map because I know there's variations in capacity. So what the right ensemble cast of AmeriCorps 
RSVP volunteers might be in conjunction with uh, AmeriCorps VISTA volunteers uh, or members, and also where we need to deploy the, the National Civilian Community Corps will be a case-by-case -case basis driven by, by demand. Uh, and we're not quite sure, that's the great X factor. How high is the demand going to be once you folks start articulating uh, the opportunity for the CTC uh, among your constituents? Uh, so we're uh, at the ready. Uh, we're just anxious to see how the demand pipeline sort of materializes. And that will give us the opportunity to, uh, as I say, come in and assist you, be supportive and take care of that gap management to make sure that this is seamless and everybody wants to enroll, gets fully enrolled. So Joelle, that's it in a nutshell. I know time is of the essence here. Uh, and I did want to make sure we don't cut too deeply into the content. Great, thank you, Malcolm, really appreciate it. And for folks that are just joining us, uh, that, that joined just after we got started, uh, this is the child tax credit uh, session and we'll be heading into the, the meat and potatoes of our, of our training enrollment uh, partnership here. Uh, you just heard from Malcolm Coles, who is the acting CEO of AmeriCorps, who shared a little bit about the opportunity that we have at AmeriCorps volunteers helping out um, with the child tax credit enrollment. Um, I have on the screen, if you just joined, um, for who is on the call today, uh, if you can let us know your name, uh, your title, your program name, um, and the general area of the country that you work in, that is important for us to be able to do some direct follow-up with you, uh, Head Start programs, so that we know how to match you up with AmeriCorps volunteers. Um, and so if you've already, if you're not sure if someone on your team, because I know there's uh, multiple staff members from individual programs joining. Uh, go ahead and submit it twice. We're, we're okay uh, going through double data. Uh, we'll just figure that out. It's again, it's important for us to be able to reach out to you. Um, so as you're doing that, I'll pivot over to the content um, and introduce the uh, folks that are gonna be sharing with us about the child tax credit enrollment. I'm gonna pivot over to Deidre Schiffling and Cara DeFarias. Uh, Deidre, Kara, are either one of you ready to roll? Yes, we are. Cool. Um, great. Well, thank you so much um, to the Head Start program and to AmeriCorps and your incredible partnership. Um, thank you to both, both agencies and organizations for partnering with us on the child tax credit. Um, we think it's very uh, uh, very strongly aligned with the missions of both agencies and our common goals um, as we as we work to um, help make life better um, for people across the country. So we appreciate you. Um, what we're going to do in the next 20 minutes is talk a little bit about the child tax credit, what it is, why it's transformational, why it's important, um, and the work that we still have to do to educate the public about the child tax credit and to sign up people who are not in our tax filing system. And we, we believe that Head Start is uniquely positioned to help identify and, um, and assist those families that are not currently tax filers. Um, and we have a couple of months to be able to reach all of those families. So that's what we're gonna do um, over the course of the next 20 minutes. Next slide. Um, we will give a quick overview of the child tax credit. We will walk through childtaxcredit.gov, which is the website um, that we set up to educate people about the child tax credit. Um, Kara is gonna do a demo of the non-filer signup tool, um, which is the way in which we can sign up families who are not in our tax filing system. So we're gonna actually show you how to do that. Um, we're going to talk about materials, and then we're going to open it up to questions. Next slide. So help is here, and we want to make sure that families across the country know. Um, President Biden passed, with the, in a partnership with Congress, passed um, the uh, American Rescue Plan a few months ago, and included in it was the child tax credit specifically to help families uh, with children make ends meet. Next slide. Um, so we have two goals in this outreach effort. The first is to build awareness and understanding of the child tax credit. So tens of millions of families have already started receiving 
money in their bank accounts from the child tax credit. We want to make sure they know that, they're aware of it, they know where it came from, and that we build strong public support so that we can continue the child tax credit into the future. Um, President Biden proposed um, extending the child tax credit through 2025 as part of his Build Back Better agenda that's being considered in Congress right now. Um, and he stated that uh, his, his ultimate goal is to make it permanent um, because it's such an effective way to cut child poverty. Um, so we wanna make sure that we're building as much public awareness and support for the child tax credit as possible. And then our second goal is to engage the families who are eligible but have not yet filed taxes um, to help them enroll so that they also can benefit from the child tax credit and also any recovery payments or stimulus payments that they may be eligible for but haven't received. Next slide. But don't just take it from me. Um, we have a special message for you uh, from Vice President Kamala Harris um, about the child tax credit. So I'll turn it over to the Vice President. Hi everyone. Thank you for joining us today and participating in this training. It is critical that we get the word out about the child tax credit and we would not be able to do this work without you. With the expansion of the child tax credit, we are supporting our nation's working families. We are strengthening our nation's middle class and we are helping to lift half of America's children who are living in poverty out of poverty. Just think about that. The impact of that will be historic, seismic even. And it will be felt not only by the children of today, it will be felt by families and communities and by our country for generations to come. And that is something to celebrate. And as we celebrate, let us also remember our work is not yet finished. We need to make sure American families know about this credit and how they can receive it. And I know you know this, but it bears repeating. If folks file taxes for 2019 or 2020 or a stimulus check, they do not have to do anything. They will get the child tax credit automatically. If they did not file taxes for 2019 or 2020 or a stimulus check, they do have to take action they need to visit childtaxcredit.gov. I'm gonna say that again, childtaxcredit.gov and fill out a simple form. The president and I need your help to spread the word and to fight to make expansion of the child tax credit permanent. You know, after the president signed the American Rescue Plan into law, I said this, Americans will see what we did here and they will feel the impact of this bill for generations to come. And that is certainly true. So thank you again for your partnership and for your leadership and know that the president and I will never stop fighting for our children, for our families and for our nation. Thank you and take care. Um, great. So as the vice president said, the American Rescue Plan increases the child tax credit. It used to be $2,000 for every child under the age of six. It is now $3,600 for every child under the age of six and $3,000 for every child ages six to 17 years old. All working families will get the full credit if they make under $150,000 a year for a couple or $112,500 for a single family with children or head of household. And that covers the vast majority of families with children in our country. So the vast, vast majority of families with children in our country are eligible. Um, another change is the automatic monthly payments. So people will receive half of their child tax credit in monthly payments from July through December of 2021. $300 each month for every child under the age of six and $250 each month for every child ages six to 17. And then they will receive the other half of their child tax credit when they file their taxes in 2022. So these child tax credits have already started 
They started July 15th was the first tranche. There was a second payment August 13th, and there'll be a next payment in the middle of September. So these are ongoing, but it's not too late if folks have not signed up. They can still sign up and get the full amount. Um, people who get IRS refunds through direct deposit will get the child tax credit in their bank account automatically on the 15th of every month. So the vast majority of people have, who are filing taxes already have a bank account that is on record with the IRS. They have already received their child tax credit. People who don't use direct deposit will get payments by mail. They'll get a check in the mail around the same time. So for the smaller number of people who don't have a bank account on file, they will receive a check in the mail. Next slide. Um, so the child tax credit is transformative. One of the reasons that I think we're also excited about this is that the child tax credit helps almost all families in our country, whether to pay for rent and food for some or save for college for others. And we all know, and Head Start knows more than anybody, that when parents can afford to live, kids do better. They have better health, higher educational attainment, higher future earnings, lower stress, they do better. Um, and yet 40% of US families, families in this country cannot afford an unexpected $400 expense. So the child tax credit really gives families a little more breathing room. It also helps stabilize the economy for everyone. So we just all lived through the biggest recession of our lifetimes. And thanks to the stimulus checks, our economy is now stable and starting um, to tick up. Um, those stimulus checks really boosted spending at all levels and increased um, small business revenue. So all of this is part of stabilizing families, helping children, and getting our country back on track. Next slide. And it's working. So we have already seen um, through the data that's come in um, that hunger, family hunger rates in our country decreased by 24% just after the first payment of the child tax credit. So a 24% decrease in child hunger, family hunger um, in our country um, after the first payment of child tax credit. That's incredible. There's, there is no way of achieving such an, a, an amazing result um, without a government program like this one. We also saw that financial anxiety for families reduced 50, re reduced financial anxiety for 56% of families just after one child tax credit payment. Um, so that's just a massive, massive impact. And lastly, we, we saw that um, the number one item that families were spending their money on after receiving the child tax credit was food. Like 50, over 50% 50 of families spent that money on food, closely followed by school supplies, um, you know, direct rent, direct bills, um, basic needs. So we know that families in our country need this money, um, deserve this money, and uh, are using this money as soon as they get it. Next slide. Um, so how do families get the money? So we kind of went over this already. Tax filers get it automatically. If you are a tax filer, you don't have to do anything. You will automatically get this money um, and you've already gotten it. Um, if you are not a tax filer, then you do need to do something. You need to sign up at the non-filer portal, um, which Kara is going to walk through and explain how to do. Um, it's very simple. It's easier than filing your taxes. So to get the first half of your child tax credit, if you are not a tax filer, you need to go into this portal and fill out some very basic information. To get the second half, you then need to file your taxes in 2022 at the usual time. Next slide. So we're going to transition now to talk about what um, non-filers need to do to sign up. And Kara is going to walk through that. Before I end, I just want to um, re-emphasize um, that what we've learned from talking to lots of groups all over the country who are working with um, people in communities day in and day out is that to, in order to successfully sign up, 
um, non-filers, it really takes uh, a person-to-person -person approach. Um, it takes a trusted messenger, a trusted person sitting with that person, that non-filer person and helping them really walk through um, and get signed up and answering their questions. So we are so grateful for this partnership with all of you. You are perfectly positioned to be that person for the families that are part of your Head Start programs um, who are, have not signed up already. Um, and we're very grateful um, for your partnership in this way. So I'll turn it over to Kara. Thank you so much, Deirdre. So you're gonna see this a couple times through the process today. What do non-filers need to have in front of them before they sign up? So they should gather a reliable email address, um, a reliable mailing address, the children's social security numbers, their social security number or ITIN as, long, as well as a bank account information. And that's if they wanna receive their payments by direct deposit. So let's go ahead, we'll jump into the demo. All right, so the first place you're gonna go is childtaxcredit.gov. Again, that's childtaxcredit.gov. And that's a page where we've given an overview of what the child tax credit is, who's available to receive it, how much they'll get. And then we also have a number of FAQs in this page, just that you know we, we know these are the questions people are asking and we wanna make sure they have the answers they need. Um, so if you go down here to the bottom of the page, you can see what is the child tax credit, who's eligible, how are they eligible, do they need to do anything? Um, and then specifically, if you go back up, we have a page specifically for non-filers. And so click there, that'll take you to another page that again is FAQs for this specific group of folks. Um, where will you send the payment? What if I don't have a permanent address? The good news is with the permanent address is as long as you have a trusted address where you would like to temporarily receive monthly checks, if you don't get direct deposit, that can be a friend, it can be a relative, it can be a shelter, a drop-in day center, traditional um, or transitional housing as well. So from here, you have an option, you can download a step-by-step -step guide. We've got these in both English and Spanish. And these guides take you through the portal um, screen by screen and tell you exactly what to do on each of them. So this first page shows like who's right. So if you're helping triage, who needs to use the non-filer signup tool, this lays out who the people are. Um, and then again, as I mentioned earlier, you're gonna see all the things you need to get before you start. And then when you're ready to go, again, we take you screen by screen and tell you step by step what to do. So let's go ahead and jump into the non-filer signup tool. You click on that, it'll take you out to this IRS web page that again, who should use it? How should it, how does it work? What do they need? Um, you would click on use the non-filer signup tool button, which will take you out to this website. Um, scroll down to the bottom, click get started. Here you'll be asked to create an account. And so again, put in the email address, confirm it, create a user ID. Um, put in a phone number, and then you're going to want to create a password that you can remember. Please put that in a safe space uh, and place. And then when you're done, you're going to go ahead and click create account, which takes you into the filing tool itself. And so I'm just going to walk you through for demo purposes. I've made up names and information, but you're going to want to start off by saying what is the filing status? So single or married filing jointly. Um, so for demo purposes, I put in Jane Smith with the phone uh, for the social security number. Um, if there is a spouse, you can put in spouse's first name, last name, and social security number or ITIN. Um, put in an address, any apartment number with city, state, and zip. The next section is about the standard deduction. So you want to let them know, can anybody claim you as a dependent or your spouse as a dependent? For this, I'm going to say no. And then we get down to the dependents form. So I'm going to put in Tim Smith, the social security number, and here you'll notice that it goes but just beyond son and daughter. There's also stepchildren, grandparents, aunts, uncles, nieces, nephews. So for this, I'm gonna select son. And this is a really important column. So qualifies for CTC or the child tax credit. Now, what does that mean? So if you click on this little question mark here, it'll tell you who um, qualifies and what conditions a child must meet to consider being qualified for the child tax credit. Um, and then when you get back here, you've got to check that box. This is such an important step, folks. So I'm going to check that. I'm going to go down to the recovery rebate credit. I'm going to say the amount I got if 
penny. Um, and they just wanna make sure here that you're getting all the money you deserve. And then for banking information, again, you can receive a paper check if you want to. We do recommend for faster handling to put a checking or a savings account. So you would put in your routing number and your account number in the step-by-step -step guide I showed you. We show you where you would find that on a check or on a bank statement. And just because we know we're gonna get this question, um, we actually do have all these materials, step-by-step -step guide, this presentation. We're gonna send all, to that, all of that to you afterwards. So the identity protection pin, it's probably not gonna be applicable in most places. So we're gonna go ahead and continue to step two. At this point, we're just gonna go verify information. Now, because these folks likely did not file a return last year, that's why we call them non-filers, you're gonna enter a zero in this column. And that just, they say it here as well, but I'm calling it out. Um, so I'm gonna enter a zero there. There was no pin last year, I was a non-filer. And then you're just gonna go through and do the electronic signature. So today's date, a five digit pin, um, I highly recommend putting that in the same safe spot you're putting your uh, password. Um, you're going to put in your date of birth and then your driver's license or state issued ID. Put all the information here, the number, the state, the issue date, the expiration date. If you don't have one, not a problem. You can leave these fields blank. And then the last step here is the email verification. So when you created the account, you will have received an email to verify it's you. You're gonna go ahead and go out to the email, click it, come back in here to finish up. And then the last step is just continue to e-file. And so at this point, a pop-up will come up. You'll take whatever's here in the box. You're gonna put it in the field here. And then to finish up, you're gonna hit submit, which I am not gonna do for the purposes of this demo because I don't want any information going to the IRS, but you would in real life. So that's the demo for the tool itself. Let's go back here. So how can you help? There's two big ways. One is helping sign up non-filers. So you can host a sign-up event or train people in your community who will reach out to non-filers directly. You can also help by raising public awareness. So you can share flyers that we're gonna provide um, in all these places listed below. You can post on social media, you can partner with people. Um, here's the materials we're gonna provide after the session today. So this is the Help Is Here flyer. It's available in Spanish and English. We'll be giving you that um, in the emails and attachment. We're also gonna give you an outreach email. This is an editable Word doc, so you can make it contextually and culturally relevant to your community and your people. We've included helpful links in there, links out to the flyers and the posters. We're also gonna provide a copy of this presentation as a PDF. So if you wanna do that and share that in your communities, you can as well. And then the last one is, as I said, mentioned those two sign up guides. So the step-by-step -step instructions with screenshots in both Spanish and English for the IRS non-filer tool. So what's next? Well, you can start by visiting childtaxcredit.gov to get started. And we have to say this again and again, because it's so very important. While everyone's getting monthly checks now, you have to file your taxes in 2022 to get the second half of your CTC payment. So with that, I'm gonna just thank you all for coming and for listening to us. And let's go ahead and open it up for Q&A. And for Q&A, I'd like to bring in um, David Chang, who's, I think, on the line from Treasury um, and who can help um, answer some of the more specific questions. Hi, folks. Nice to meet you all. We also have Lori Reese uh, from the Head Start uh, program, Hopes Cap, in Somerset, New Jersey, who can help us with any Head Start-related specifics. Um, she's been doing, her program has been doing the work as well. Uh, I know we've gotten a couple of questions in the chat and I can flag right up to them uh, here in just a sec. I don't know if uh, David, uh, you're able to see that. Um, there was a question about where folks, where can families find the recovery rebate credit amount? And uh, the follow-up question is on their tax returns. Yes, so the recovery rebate credit is, um, uh, is actually them being these families also being able to claim any stimulus checks that they did not get. Um, and so what the IRS is actually asking there is um, how much money do we owe you um, for stimulus check one, stimulus check two, and stimulus check three. Um, so it actually, um, you know, uh, the guide uh, that Kara pointed to on childtaxcredit.gov actually helps walk you through some of the calculations that you would have to do in order to figure out that number. For a number of these people, if they got their stimulus checks, um, the answer might be zero. You know, they might have gotten all of their stimulus checks. Um, 
but for others, uh, you may have to, it might be, you know, adding up all of, all of the stimulus checks that they're supposed to get. Um, and some might have gotten, you know, check one, but not check three for some reason. And as a result, um, they might have to do a little bit of arithmetic to make sure that they um, claim the right number with the IRS. But I think that's just another, um, thanks for asking that question, because it really highlights what you can do by signing a family up. Um, not only will they get the child tax credit, but there's also a lot of stimulus check money that um, we know that these families uh, qualify for and deserve. And um, because the IRS doesn't know about them, hasn't been able to get it to them. And we, we cannot see the chat, or at least on the White House side, we cannot see the chat. So if you want to uh, read out any um, questions that are posed in the chat, please do. Joelle. Uh, we'll do it. Don't see anything that's come in specific uh, as a question follow up right now. Um, I will pose, and I know uh, we've discussed this on team calls uh, for folks that um, may not be uh, having documented status. Is there anything you can share around that, uh, uh, David and our team? Yeah, so um, the child tax credit, um, the child, if they have a social security number, um, then they likely are eligible. Um, there are, are some very specific things about, um, there's, there's a couple of different types of social security numbers. For US citizens and permanent residents, like you totally qualify. Um, for people like DACA re uh, recipients, um, they might have a social security card that says um, valid for work with DHA, DHS authorization. Um, and so they also, um, as long as they still have their DHS authorization and their immigration status hasn't changed, um, they, that child also qualifies. Um, and then um, there are some social security numbers out there that say not valid for work. And unfortunately those children um, will not qualify. Um, and then for the parent, they just need to have an, uh, an ITIN or a social security number um, in order to be able to file taxes um, for that child. Thank you, David. Uh, I'm just uh, scrolling here for the chat. Not sure why it's not showing for you all, but uh, I'm looking for any specific questions that may have come through. We're getting a lot of contact info, which is great. Thank you, everyone. Um, but if there are any particular questions that uh, the community has for uh, our friends here at US Treasury, uh, now's the time to ask. And as I mentioned, you can unmute yourselves if you'd like to go ahead and uh, just quickly identify yourself. Uh, and ask your question. I do have a question from Rich Boyce, which is if a family filed taxes and is receiving the CTC now, but changes their mind, can they cancel it? Um, and the follow-up is remind us that receiving the CTC portion now will reduce the amount they will get after filing taxes next year. Yeah, thanks, Rich, for that question. Um, so the this year, as we mentioned, the child tax credit basically expanded. Um, so it used to be um, two thousand dollars, and now it's three thousand dollars or thirty six hundred dollars. Um, and then uh, half of those are advanced payments. Um, so the answer is, uh, if you would like to have your even bigger child tax credit all delivered to you when you file your taxes next year, that is definitely something you can do. Um, and you can do that by going to the IRS and using what's called the Child Tax Credit Update Portal and opting out of monthly payments. Opting out of monthly payments does not mean uh, saying no to the money, right? It means that you just are asking, you're saying no to monthly payments and that you'd like to receive um, whatever uh, you are eligible for at the end of the year when you, when you file your taxes. Uh, for most people um, who uh, they actually, you know, are used to kind of having a large um, tax return at the end of the year when they file their taxes. Um, and because the expansion is coming at the same time that advanced monthly payments are, most people won't really see a change in their um, uh, end of year uh, at their tax refund um, in some sense, because there's still half of that expanded child tax credit that will be part of their uh, tax refund next year. Um, and so, yes, uh, they have choices, and, um, but for most people, um, getting monthly payments does not mean that they will have uh, a much smaller refund, and it'll roughly be about the same. 
Thank you, David. A uh, very important question, which is by when do families need to complete this? I believe that is by November 15th or earlier. Are we, are we getting that right? Yeah, so I would encourage you to file um, sooner, um, obviously, because what that means you'll get more monthly payments, you'll get the money sooner, um, but the, the deadline is going to be somewhere around mid-November. Awesome, thank you. A follow-up from Paul Mast Hewitt. Uh, he's asking, if a parent does not have an I-10 yet, how do they go about getting an I-10? Yes, so there is an I-10 um, application process that happens. Um, it goes along with filing a, a paper return for the first time. It's a little bit more complicated to walk through here, um, but we can definitely send you a little uh, a link on the IRS um, to, to help walk you through that process. Um, it does take a little bit of time. Um, and so that is something that um, I would encourage uh, you to get started as soon as possible. Um, if for some reason, you know, the I-10 application takes a while or they don't get to around for it for a while, again, as they will also be able to claim the full credit when they file next year. Um, so the, the earlier we can get them in the system, the better. Um, and uh, that'll also set them up really great for filing next year as well. Great. Um, a question from Adam Huska, which is, can parents without an I-10 or social security number uh, without, excuse me, can parents without a I-10 social security number but have children with a social security number qualify for the CTC? So because of how this program is administered, it's administered through the IRS, you do need to have your information in the IRS system. Uh, so that does mean that you need to have a um, tax identification number of some form. Um, and so that does mean that you need an I-10 or SSN. Um, again, you can apply for an SSN in order to file taxes. So um, it, uh, so that, that process might take a little bit, but that is something that you can do. So uh, that parent qualifies, but they do need to do a little bit of work to get an I-10. Thanks, David. A question from Jasmine Emo will, or Imo, will the CTC delay their regular refund unrelated to CTC? Uh, no, it won't uh, delay your refund. Uh, just monitoring for uh, questions in the chat. Uh, one thing that we have had come up in our conversations as we're talking through this is if if someone is in transition uh, from uh, their their permanent home or home wherever they filed last, uh, if there is somewhere uh, if there is someone that can receive the refund on their behalf, is that a possibility? It is. Um, if someone is in transition, um, I think the best recommendation is to figure out how to set up a bank account such that that money can be accessible to them wherever they go. Um, there's also ways of having um, certain reloadable debit cards will also, um, if depending on, on the brand, may actually have uh, the ability for you to get a routing number and an account number that um, can be used. Um, and that would be my uh, first recommendation. Um, otherwise, the check will go to the address that is uh, filed with, um, and uh, and then you'll you'll have to figure out how to get that check from that person such that you can cash it. Great, thanks, uh, thanks, David. I wonder, Lori Reese, uh, if you've had run into any of these similar uh, situations uh, at your program uh, out in New Jersey, and if there's ways that y'all have. Uh, work with the, with, the, uh, with the person or family. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, yes, we have had some similar situations with that. Um, we do have a lot of families or several families who have children with social security numbers, but the, the parents do not. And they have to have that direct assistance to help them um, apply for the I-10. Um, we have a lot of families with um, where their literacy uh, level is not at the level they need to comprehend all the um, questions that are asked on the, um, the non-filer portal. 
So we have we provide a lot of assistance for those families as well. Uh, again, that's why it's so important about the, the the partnership as Head Start being the deliverer of that message, right? Because some folks are are at very different levels, and and uh, it may be scary to someone, regardless, you know, of where they come from, whatever, getting a bank account set up, getting uh, the I ten figured out, which requires a little bit more paperwork, um, and so that's why um, you know having Head Start be there uh, to to help uh, the families, the, the the parents walk through is so important. So. Um, really appreciate the work that everyone is doing and is going to be doing. Do you have any other questions uh, coming in the chat? I don't think I've seen anything come in here just the last minute. Can I ask a question of Lori, um, which is like, we would just love to understand um, what's working in terms of reaching families and like any tips you have for how you're having these conversations would be great. Absolutely. We are fortunate uh, enough as a community action agency um, to have our con community services program, who is a certified uh, VITA program. So we work very closely with our community advocates, with our community programs, um, and they actually have offices located in uh, some of our Head Start centers. So um, we get information directly from them that we share with the families. We share, we send it out through email. We send it out through uh, social media. Um, and during our intakes, our one-on-one -on -one, uh, interviews for in intakes with our families, we share the information there where they can ask them direct questions from us. And then we do refer them to our VITA program. Um, so if there is a VITA program in your community, I would strongly recommend partnering with them because they are um, trained by the IRS to help families to navigate those portals and um, you know, get through uh, and be able to apply for those um, for the tax credit. That's amazing. Laurie, is the inverse of that? I wonder if there's anything in particular that isn't isn't very, isn't helping uh, isn't working very well in reaching families right now. I wonder if you've seen some of those practices that you found that just not uh, useful. I'm sorry. Was that for me, Joel? Yeah, if there's any uh, practices that you've noticed in the program that isn't really reaching families right now, is there anything like on the flip side of the question that Deidre had just asked? And not so much uh, the methods not working, it's uh, the time that is needed to really educate the families to determine if they are eligible. We do have a large population of um, families who cannot file or not eligible to file due to their immigration status. Um, but just being able to have the time right now, especially while we're uh, trying to enroll all our families for the new school year, but that is our best opportunity to talk to them about this as well. So it's more of a time factor. And I think that's where um, having VITA volunteers to assist us would be a great uh, benefit. Awesome, thanks. Uh, uh, thanks, Lori. And uh, I, I know we're getting close on time here. I want to um, make sure, ask one more time, if you have a program point of contact that you'd like us to reach out to for uh, some of that matching of AmeriCorps volunteers, please do drop that into the chat. Uh, it'd be really helpful for us. Um, and as Lori just mentioned, uh, with Head Start right now, doing the screenings and, and getting uh, families into the program, um, the AmeriCorps match uh, will be able to help us and in, in really helping with that critical time right now of getting, uh, uh, of helping families get enrolled and be screened. Um, so, um, if you drop that information into the chat, it will help us directly reach out to you. Um, that will be very really helpful. Um, before we close out, I want to ask uh, our team and friends over at uh, uh, 
the White House, the Treasury, and anyone in America who would like to share anything specific before we close out? Um, I would just like to say thank you so much for having us on and thank you for your partnership in reaching families. Um, I know that um, with the ramping down of VITA um, over, you know, through the fall, um, it, that has a little bit strained our ability to, um, to, to reach these families um, in that way. And so we're really grateful for your partnership in whatever way you can to make sure that your families know about this and, and have some, some help in, in uh, signing folks up. So we really appreciate it. Thank you so much. It's such a difference maker and look forward to partnering with you uh, going forward. Um, I would only like to add, uh, sort of echo what Joelle said, the critical nature of getting us your local uh, point of contact information. Once we have that, then we can take the next step and really establish those local relationships that are gonna be the connective tissue that make this work. So thank you in advance. I'll pause and any other questions uh, before I close out uh, from uh, our friends in Head Start or anyone really on the call. So I do like to give next steps or else we're just hanging out. <laughs> All right, I don't see anything coming in. So next steps for us. Um, if folks, uh, we do have, you know, some way of reaching you, obviously, we've done that as NHSA to Head Start. So what will make it a lot easier is if we hear from you on who your point of contact is in the program, uh, and who we can reach out to. So that way we can start matching up AmeriCorps volunteers to come into your program to help with the screening, to help with the navigation at this very critical time. Um, so it's uh, it's uh, this is only the first of the, the series of trainings that we will be having, uh, obviously, as we expand and we hear from more programs that are looking to have AmeriCorps volunteers join their programs efforts locally, we will have more you know, navigation trainings and have folks uh, join. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, if you have any doubts, any questions, you're like, I didn't uh, figure out what they wanted us to do. Uh, our contact, my contact information is on the screen. You're welcome to reach out. Um, uh, we'll definitely be helping uh, coordinate some of that work. Um, we will be sharing the uh, links, uh, slides, and, and, um, uh, and one pagers that our friend shared uh, from the US Treasury. We'll get that all out to you after the webinar. But other than that, uh, thank you so much. And I believe we are, we are ready to rock and roll, get some families enrolled, uh, more families enrolled in child uh, tax credit. Have a great thank day, you. everyone.